Hey, how's everyone doing today? This is Josh Noel with Rocketstock.com, and in this exciting After Effects tutorial, we're going to create a realistic photo gallery using, I guess these are Polaroid type photos, and I'm going to show you how you can posit these photos together to make them look realistic as if we're shooting a live action shot with printed photos. If you're looking for some ideas or in a time crunch, you can check out some of our photo templates over at rocketstock.com and these templates are pre-made and ready to go so you'll be able to drop your images right into these templates and you'll be able to start your project, put all your content in there and render it out in about 30 minutes. So, so let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial and see how we can get started. So first things first, we already have a main composition over here but what I want to do is go to create a new composition and I want to make the width and height 1080. I want to make it a square or whatever aspect ratio you want your picture to be. So just keep that in mind. So I'm doing a one to one and we call this one image one. Awesome. Okay. So first things first, we're going to bring in a white solid background by grabbing the rectangle tool and we're just going to cover this up. No big deal. Then we'll click off this layer and we'll go to fill and make this a little bit darker. So we see what we're doing. Make sure the rectangle tool is selected again and we'll hold down shift on our keyboard to draw a perfect rectangle kind of like this. And then we'll go to the line tab and we'll make sure to center this up. So now we have this rectangle that's in the middle of everything. And now what we can do is bring in an image. So let's say that this image right here is our, what we want to use. So we'll bring it in here. We can scale it down so we can kind of fit it into you know, our template here. And we're going to bring this layer right underneath our smaller rectangle in here and toggle switches and modes until you see the track mat and set it to alpha mat. Now you'll have this perfect placeholder for your rectangle image. And if you want to swap this photo out for something else, make sure to click the layer that is your, you know, your picture, your photo, video, it doesn't matter. And you select it over here in the project window and you hold down alt on your keyboard and drag it on top. You can easily swap out your image and then you can easily like rescale it. So like come here, I can obviously scale it and it keeps the same exact form. So that is really cool. So I want to add a little bit of texture to the white background here. So I have this sort of canvas texture. Remember, you can download these project files and we can just drag this in here on top of our white background and just hit T on keyboard for opacity and lower the opacity down to like 20%. And that just adds a little bit of texture to it. Of course, we might want to scale this down. And then we'll go to Effect, Color Correction, Tint. And this will get rid of the yellow in this image. So, and now we go to our main composition, which has nothing in it at the moment. We could bring in Image 1. And now we can scale this in here. And there you have it. So what we want to do now is we kind of want to find an image, like a background image, like a table, a piece of wood, which is what I have right here. And we're going to bring this into our composition. And we'll scale this down by hitting S on our keyboard. All right. So we might want to add multiple photos in here. And we really want to start positioning everything. So first things first, make this layer a 3D layer. And let's turn on motion blur as well so we get that out of the way now. And we hit R on our keyboard. We go to Z rotation. We can kind of rotate this by a little bit. Maybe put it over here in the corner. And what we can do really quick to duplicate this and add more photos in here, we go to the project up here. We duplicate the image. So you go to edit, duplicate, you know, just control D on a PC or command D on a Mac. And now we can come in here, bring in image two into our main comp, go into image two. We go to our photo. And just like I taught you before, hold down alt on your keyboard, drag in your new photo. And now just rescale it, go back into your main comp. And now you have another photo in there, which is really cool. And you can position it, put it wherever you want. You can relayer the images. And that is looking nice. And if we want, we can also add like a little bit of a drop shadow. So we go to effect, perspective, drop shadow. We add it to the top image, of course. And we can increase the distance by a little bit with the softness. And that just adds a little bit more depth to our images there. So of course, right now you're set up for success where you can animate the photos to kind of drop in or move whatever around. And I'm not going to show you guys how to do that just because that's some very basic animation. You can come over here, hit, you know, P on your keyboard. You can, you know, move around the Z position, have it drop in. You can do some rotation keyframing. And there's just so much that we can do. I want to focus more on the layering, the depth and bringing the scene alive. So I'm going to show you what we can do to add some movement and some depth. So let's go to layer new camera and I click OK. And what we're going to do here is open this up and we're going to add a keyframe for position and that's it. And of course, make sure all your layers are 3D layers before you move forward here, but that's good. Move this keyframe forward in time to maybe five seconds. 
And when I come over here to the top, grab the track Z camera tool. Just click and hold down the camera button up there. And we can zoom out by a little bit. And we'll also add a keyframe for the Z rotation. We'll move this forward in time as well. And we'll, we can rotate this by a touch. And now we'll come here to the background image, hit S and keyboard for scale. We'll bring this up all the way. So we have this very nice movement in here and it really makes the scene come to life, but there's still not, it's not realistic enough for me. So let's go to layer new light and make it a point, click okay. And this will add just a nice little natural vignette to this. Of course you can hit P on your keyboard for position and you can reposition the light. So you can maybe bring it backward or you can bring it downward. You know. So it just adds, it's just really cool. And of course, if you wanted to, you can animate the light as well. So we can hit a keyframe for position, move forward in time. And we can like, hey, come across the scene like this. And I'll just add a little bit more dynamic lighting to our scene. So that's pretty cool. And to really make the scene stand out, I'm going to go to Layer, New, and Adjustment Layer. Go to Effect, Blur, and Sharpen, and add Gaussian Blur. And of course, we'll crease the scene. So we can maybe go to like 15 or so, repeat edge pixels. And you're like, whoa, the scene's really out of focus. Well, we're going to add a natural blur here. So grab the pen tool. And let's say we want to stylize this a little bit. So we'll come over here, do something like this, and hit M on your keyboard for mask, set it to subtract, hit F on your keyboard for feather, and feather this out. All right, so now we have a little bit more focus on our scene here, and maybe we can focus more on the center image or whatever image you want to do depending on how you decided to mask that out and lastly i want to go to the background image and add another blur to this just add a gaussian blur just by a little bit just because this, the background image is a little too sharp and that can kind of help you know add some more realism to it depending on you know the background image that you're using so make sure to turn motion blur at the top and if this is what you were hoping to accomplish then you can go ahead and render out your project and after our quick render here is our photo animation and i hope you guys were able to take away several techniques from this video and apply it to your own work and remember if you're on a time crunch check out rocketstock.com for our photo templates they will save you a ton of time and help you produce amazing results